What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, this is episode number 14. We start this season off on the back of our big win over Morecambe in the last game, in the last episode to keep our unbeaten start to the season alive. Four games in, ten points on the board, three wins and a draw, like Bristol City so far the only undefeated side in the division. But a decent start for Newport County, top of the, t I say decent, top of the table right now. Absolutely loving it. Of course I said this season I want to get promoted to the championship. We're a bang average side in this division, two stars. Star, but don't forget, we've got Davis, Super Ben Davis. Can't think of a chant right now, but I will think of what season goes on. Anyway, yeah, first game of the season. So Pompey, Portsmouth, the last from Fratton Park, coming to take us on at Rodney Parade as we aim to keep our unbeaten starts this season going. And we fell behind early for a cross. I was literally stunned. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, since the patch that came out on console a few days ago, I uh, don't know whether you guys have got it yet, if you've played on it yet. But yeah, the AI now crossed from open play. I know, I'm as stunned as you are as well. <laughs> of course, in, in previous patches and in previous versions, they, they just would never cross from open play. If down if they were down the wings with, again, a, a winger or a fullback or a wingback or whatever, they just never, ever crossed it. They just always passed out, passed towards the edge of the area or back towards their defenders. They would never cross. But now, since the patch, I'm noticing it. They're crossing from open play about time. Anyway, this is a really great game and so challenging as well. Uh, we were down early through that cross and then equalised through one of our own from a dead ball situation from the corner, whipped in and headed in by Terry Taylor. We then fell behind again, but a few minutes later, talk about resilience from this Newport County side. Down twice in the game, but not down bad. Come back two times to level it. Alan Johnson, Youth Academy striker, second goal in two games. Shows no potential whatsoever, but hey, decent start to his career in League One. So 2-2 to the final score there against Pompey, and I'll take that as well. I'll definitely take that. It means we remain unbeaten after our first five games, and that's a really good start for Newport County as well. Now I mentioned before you know my aim this season is to get promoted to the championship. Um, obviously as we know in League 1, unlike in League 2, there's not free automatic promotion places where last year of course we snuck into third to gain promotion automatically. There's only two and then the third team to go up goes up via the playoffs. I don't care how we go up so long as we do but I really wouldn't fancy my chances in the playoffs with a small squad. So, yeah, my, my aim this year is to stay in the top two for as long as we can. It's going to be very difficult to do that. There are a lot of quality teams in this division. Bristol City off to a great start. I said in the last episode, I think Hull City will definitely be up there or thereabouts come the end of the campaign. I think those two are probably the front runners this season. So, it, it is going to be difficult. But hopefully, we can stay there for as long as possible. Anyway, second game of today's episode of like London Buses. Can you believe it? Yeah, two crosses in two games. And they both scored from as well. Obviously, I'm pleased to see the AI are now crossing from open play to make the gameplay more realistic, but I'm slightly worried it's going to be a little bit too OP. EA do these things, and I've, I've talked about it before, where like their fix for a problem with the gameplay is to like take it to the opposite side and to another level. It's like, you know, many years ago, crosses were like so OP uh, in like FIFA 18, FIFA 19, you could score with like 75% of them and then their fix in the next patch was to stop them working whatsoever. I'm a bit worried that's what's going to happen now in the patch. Yeah, yeah, will cross, but they'll cross a lot and they'll have like a ridiculous success rate with them. Anyway, at least it's good to see them crossing now. It does make it a lot more realistic as opposed to going down the flanks, not having a man marking them and then just passing backwards. We were 2-0 down in this game. We also, of course, won League 2 last year and we've made a better start than they have to League 1, but they were playing really well. We were 2-0 down. Could have been 3-0 down as well, but thankfully we're still only training by two. And then we were training by one. Yeah, just past Yarmark. Rishesha, I love this guy, man. My starting right wing back. I really do like him. He's got a little bit of pace. He's not rapid, but he's got a bit of pace. Good dribble as well. And a decent finish too. Smacking it off the far post and made it 2-1. So deficit half, back in the game. And in stoppage time, one last chance to level it and keep the undefeated start alive. Which we do so as well. Ruben Colwell and Isaac Davis to form a Bluebirds playing a 1-2. Cole will run it through 1-1. One -on -one. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I was so nervous when I was going through 1-1 one -on -one there. I really was. Because I don't know if you guys are the same as me. But when you start a season off and you're undefeated, you're always like... One more game. Just one more game. Please, just, just just one more game. Just let me have one more game where I failed to get uh, get beaten. And Cole Will there sees us battle back from two goals down to make it 2-2. With virtually the final kick of the game. I'm so bad at finishing chances in this year's FIFA. I thought I was going to miss the target <laughs> with the final kick of the game. But thankfully, held my nerve, drilled it in. Newport County remained undefeated from their first six games. Still falling out. We saw the Pendry was sold. Totally fine with me. Youth player with no potential. Whatsoever. Also, as well, Ben Davis' position was changed from left back to holding mid. And as you can see, 
He grew a rating. Yeah, Davis grew a rating from 79 to 80 overall. And it's not a real surprise either because when you look at his technical stats here, he's a good passer of the ball. He's got great defensive stats with 81 stand tackle, 80 slide tackle, 79 interceptions as well. The defensive mid to me does seem to be his best position. So I'm not really surprised he grew a rating there. But it's just funny to me, you know, we've got an 80 rated player in League One. But also to get rid of the exclamation mark and a minus one as well, I did decide to change formation from Newport County's team specific 5 2 3 to the default 5 2 3. And the reason I did this is because that meant I could now drag him down by adjusting the position and make him an official DM in this team. And that's something I really recommend for you guys as well. If you are playing players out of position, what you will notice is that not always, but oftentimes they'll have an exclamation mark on their kit and they'll have like a minus next to their name so Davis for example there had a minus one and what that means is he's operating a slightly lesser ability than what his natural base stats are because he's being played out of position so what you'll notice if you're looking for his stats there in the team management screen is that he'd have across a few attributes like minuses and that would represent his uh, potential so his, uh, his temporary downgrade in his current ability so if you adjust a position and you play him in the position he's most familiar Familiar with, which now of course he's naturally a defensive midfielder, that means that this way he will have a temporary uh, attribute increase and play at a higher level. It's just something I recommend doing. A good example is if you're watching my Brentford career mode right now, then firstly, thank you, really hope you're enjoying. I'm absolutely loving the save there. And what you'll notice is that we're playing a 5 3 2 in that save, and my left wing back and right wing back are actually left mid and right wing back, so I've just adjusted the position slightly. If you look at the 5-3-2 I'm using with Brentford, it seems completely symmetrical, but instead I've got Young on the left hand side, he's a left mid, so I've adjusted his position, knocks it up slightly, so I can make him an official LM and have attribute increases, and on the right hand side I'm using Tariq Lamptey, and again he's a right wing back, so I'll play him as natural right wing back, and he can also have attribute increases as well. Same with my CM duo, the silver plays CM, on Jaeger plays CDM, and that way they have attribute increases, as opposed to decreases as well. God, that can be really boring when I put my mind to it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if you guys really got much out of that piece of information or not, but maybe it's a little tip that can help you. I certainly hope so. Anyway, uh, following out transfer deadline day, uh, as you can see, we sold Lewis Mansell, which I was totally fine with. He's a youth, uh, not a youth academy striker, he's a young striker, but he's got no potential whatsoever and a very low starting overall. He's our lowest rate striker in this team. And I did try and loan in a couple of players as well. We didn't have enough money to bring in anyone permanently, but I tried to loan in Dylan Lever of Manchester United and also Ethan and Paddy of Chelsea. The only problem is their wages are just far too high. We, we can't afford those guys yet. So I tried to negotiate splits with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Thomas Tuchel as well. Unfortunately, neither manager was willing to let me get those guys and only pay a very small percentage of their weekly wage. That's kind of frustrating, really. You'd think a club of that size would be all right with it, but evidently not. They want to save their pennies just like we do. We need the money and we haven't got the money right now because I spent it all on Ben Davis and the Five Star Youth Scout. Hey, speaking of, here we go. First batch of scouting for the new scout in and as you can see there, there were a couple of players in here that could be all right. I don't like to put players in my academy, I was just one month's worth of scouting as I always say, because their potential range and overall range can often decrease over time. But I did put one guy in there. He looks okay, to be fair. Dylan Reese, uh, starting off a natural CM with high, high work rates. 57 overall, 17 years old. But to me, he looks best suited in the attacking midfield role or on the wings. Yeah, we don't play with attacking midfielders, so because of that, I thought I'd train to be a winger. That's most likely where we'll get game time in this team. And I'm noticing this in youth players a lot nowadays as well. I don't know if it's EA's way of sort of like showing off their development plans uh, feature a lot more. But I get a lot of players in my academy that are playing in the wrong position. There's another one right there. But even so, we'll train him to a winger. It'll only take him four weeks. And we'll see whether that gives him an overall boost. So, yeah, the transfer window over. We only bought in two players. They were both on free transfers. But, of course, the most noteworthy is indeed Ben Davis. You look to the side there. We are still a two-star team. But the question is... Are we good enough to maintain this great start right now? In the top two, still undefeated. How long can we keep it up as September comes around? Well, for the first game of today's episode, this was interesting. There was an absentee in our starting 11, and it didn't take you long to figure out who it was. Yeah, Ben Davis, not in the starting 11. And you might be wondering why that is, as Tony Matthews bangs in his first goal of the season. Go on, Tony, our academy graduate of the mark this year. It's because he's on international duty. Yeah, he's away with Wales, and this is the one negative about having Wales represent 
representatives in League 1 and League 2. Now, as we know, when international breaks come round, the Premier League and the Championship also go away as well. But in the lower leagues, in League 1 and League 2 in the Football League, and then below that in the Football Pyramid as well, Play continues. They don't go away for international break. Play continues because most teams won't have any, and if, if if any, then maybe one or two international representatives at most. So it means that during the international breaks, we'll be missing Ben Davis. So for this game here, Bolton Wanderers, no Ben Davis, but no problem. Tony Matthews scores the only goal of the game. 1-0 Newport County. Back to winning ways after back-to-back -back draws. Great to get a clean sheet as well. Been really decent defensively to start the season off. And there we go. No Ben Davis. We still get the win. 1-0 the final score. Still unbeaten and still in the top two. Bristol City off to a red hot start. Four points. Clear us right now. Us and them the only undefeated sides in the division. But what a start for Newport County. Seven games in. In the top two, let's see how long it lasts. But that was this episode of CNC, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, if you had it, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of CNC very soon.